From the depths of their inner life, let them love, honor, adore, serve, praise, bless, and glorify our Most High and Eternal God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. With all that they are, let them adore Him, because we should pray always and not lose heart. This is what the Father desires. In her book of that same title, Pray Always, Sister Evelyn Ann reminds us that if we want to be faithful to our call, we have to put prayer at the center of our lives. Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI uses even stronger language in Sacramentum Caritatis in which he says, the principal purpose of consecrated persons is the contemplation of things divine and constant union with God in prayer. Looking back on our community's 147 year history, we see that it is precisely prayer that has bound us together as a community enabled us to remain faithful to our Franciscan vocation in the church and been the source of life for all our apostolic works. Prayer is the soul that animates our community, but it has had an interesting history, one which we will now explore. In order to grasp the spiritual patrimony of our community, it is worth recalling the words of Pope John Paul II in Vita Consecrata, in which he wrote, the identity of religious institutes is bound up with a particular spirituality and apostolate. The church is concerned that religious institutes grow and develop in accordance with the, the spirit of their founders and foundresses. In other words, our life of prayer is intrinsically bound up with our Franciscan charism. So in speaking about our Franciscan charism, I thought we'd talk to Sister Louise, who's in charge of mission here at the Mother House, and just really get the idea of what, what was the place of prayer in the life of St. Francis and his early followers. I think for Francis, prayer centered around Christ. You know, and, and even in talking to the employees, and I, you know, I'm telling them that we're Franciscan, and, you know, I'll share more about Francis, but only because Francis was a a way to get us to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I think for Franciscan prayer, it's focused on Jesus. And so, you know, we can look at the mysteries of Christ, the crib, mm -hmm. the cup, and the cross. Yeah. And I think that pretty much sums it up that, that it didn't focus on a, a, a saint or an event, but every, only the events in the life of, of the Lord. Yeah. So were there concrete practices that, of the early Franciscans in terms of prayer? Do we know anything of those? Well, I don't think we know anything directly except from Francis's prayers themselves. And most of his prayers begin like, Most High, Glorious God. So the majesty of God comes through, and yet also the littleness of God. And, and in our um, novena before Christmas, yeah, you know we have that idea that God's to be praised because God is great. Yeah, and God's to be loved because God is little. Mm -hmm. And I think that comes from Francis, um, not directly. You know, I don't think you can trace it exactly. Sure. But the whole sense of who Christ is in the life of Francis, and who Christ is in our own lives. Yeah, I think there's a a unity between yeah. the two. You know, we celebrate St. Francis, etc., and St. Clair, but we look at their lives in, in terms of their love for Jesus. And I think Franciscan prayer is based on love of God. And that, uh, this new evangelization thing, you know, what is it? But trying to get people to realize how much God loves them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Franciscan prayer is. And and unless we take time to realize how much God loves us, we're going to forget. Yeah. And so I think that's the purpose of contemplative prayer, of um, office, of praying the Psalms, of, of supporting one another in prayer, of taking time to look at the, go the gospel for the next Sunday. I think all of those practices that we have um, stem from the whole life of Francis 
and the desire for his rule to be based on the gospel and for our rule, for us to be yeah. based on the gospel. What you're saying kind of puts us as Franciscans in a position to be able to offer something really valuable to the church. Could you speak a little bit about about that? We want to let people see that our lives are based uh, on a love for him that we couldn't do anything else. And I think that's what we give to the church. And we give to the church the, the sense of, of joy, the sense of um, poverty and the and that nothing else nothing else will fill us up except for, for Jesus. And we're willing to, you know, live that way. Yeah. Happily and with one another. Saint Francis was a lover of prayer and the scriptures. So in the liturgy of the hours we're praying the scriptures and Francis was also a lover of the Eucharist. So we pray those as our centerpiece of our liturgical life.